Run it back for the boys from 69. Back for the fans on 12th and Pine. Run it back to back and raise it high. Hello, Chiefs Kingdom, and welcome to the Milwaukee Chiefs cast live from the Wolf Den. I am Chris. I'm Josh, and we're going to be looking at a 2020 Chiefs season recap and also look forward to this coming season because we never sleep on football. And a big reminder that all Southeast Wisconsin residents are invited to join us for game day. Visit mkechiefsfans.com for more info about the group. And also, please make sure to uh, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Today, as always, we will be talking Chiefs. With our guest host tonight, uh, we have Doug Morris, the founder of Arrowhead South. Welcome, Doug. And we also have... Hey, how we doing, Chief Kingdom? Howdy, howdy. We also have our Andy Richter-esque producer and sound engineer, Brian Reynolds. And we are, of course, presented by Complete Weddings and Events, your leading provider of photo, video, DJ, photo booth, lighting, and coordination services. Visit them at completewedo.com. And let's get right into everything. First of all, uh, thanks all our internet commenters. We just love all the nice stuff you're saying about us. So, oh, yes. uh, Doug, welcome. <laughs> hey, I missed out on that. Wait, hey, what's the deal here? Oh, you we know, got all. Uh, isn't there supposed oh. to be like a, a some kind of guest room where you put like a bowl of fruit and like goodie bags or something? A green yeah, room, sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'm, I'm sure your uh, kitchen yeah, has all that bunch stuff. Of yeah. <laughs> you gonna blame that on Ryan, Brian or what? You yeah, know? Brian. There you go. Uh, oh, who's Brian. The <laughs> Josh, by the way, uh, the vi the video where they're reacting to us. Yeah. Fifty thousand views right now. As I sit here, it uh, must have gotten shared. It doubled. It doubled today. <laughs> so 50,000 shares. Yeah, so uh, we, we did some uh, Super Bowl previews, and um, as you can imagine, we were picking the Chiefs to win like uh, any, you know, fan type Rational of thing would be. Would have done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, obviously that didn't work out. So we're, uh, we're, we're hearing about it, which, uh, you know, quite frankly, we think is pretty entertaining. We're, we're happy for all the views mm -hmm. that we're getting, but uh, some of our, uh, some of our videos are showing up in other videos and uh, apparently they're tracking better than us. So uh, we're, we're going to be working on that. But so uh, to, to get into the season, Doug, what were your thoughts on the 2020 season as a whole? Well, you know, obviously it was a good season. I mean, you can't always win Super Bowl. I don't care who you are. You couldn't. You can't win Super Bowl every year. It's just not possible. You know, and it's a. I mean, would you rather come close and lose a last second field goal or get blown out? I mean, either way, you lost. We say, oh, you you feel good about yourself, but we should feel good about ourselves. I mean, like what we went through last year. We had all that excitement. It's first time in fifty years, and we had all that. I mean. It, you can't you can't just have that every year. You know, we 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 still have the core group. Everybody's back next year. You know, they may even take it back, whatever slogan they come up with. And we always gonna have Pat Mahomes. So we're gonna be good for a while. You know, I mean no Mahomes you know, he's gonna be good for another ten, twelve years at least in top four. And then you've got um, Kelsey and and Hill. And all these guys, they, they may be a year older, but they're not over the hill yet. They're still in their prime. So, I mean, we just, I mean, obviously it's the old line. And, you know, I was just flabbergasted that, that Reed didn't try to do something. I don't know if it would have helped or not, you know, bring into the tight end, try to wide receiver chip him. I don't know, bring in the sausage. I don't know, something to see if you can get better blocking. I don't know if it would have helped or made a difference, but. I mean, I thought at halftime they would try something, man. Dude, the dude was running for his life. What is it? Was it 500 yards? You know, back there behind the line of scrimmage running yeah, around? Yeah, yeah. That's some bad yeah. blocking. Yeah, 497. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's not really, you know, their fault either. They're backups. You know, they are what they are. You know, it's not like that was uh, Reed Schwartz and LDT and all these people back there. I mean, so. I need to do something, even if these guys are back. I mean, Achilles isn't as bad for, you know, offensive lineman like a wide receiver or something like that. But still, I mean, geez, man, you got a, you got 300 pounders pushing up against you. That Achilles ain't fully healed. That ain't going to work. So I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I mean, you can get in, interior linemen pretty, you know, competent ones pretty cheap, you know, on the free agent market, but you just can't pick up a left tackle just anywhere. I mean, a competent one anyway. 
or for that matter, right tackle nowadays. So let, let, let's get into uh, one of the other questions we were going to look at, because I'm, I'm guessing this is a direction you're going to go. What do you think are the top three positional needs for the draft that's coming up in April? All right, I think offensive line, offensive line, offensive line, man. Jeez, you got to do something. You've got to have backups, you know, that are better. But uh, you always got to keep adding. With this offense, you always got to add. But do you need to take first? Now, they tell me I'm not a big draft pick, but uh, – they tell me the offensive line depth is pretty good this year. So maybe, you know, we can go ahead and night offense in the first, you know, 32nd pick, 30th pick, whatever it is, and uh, then go in second round and get a good offensive tackle, you know, or something like that interior line. But we still got to get speed. I mean, I know they're going to bring back Hitchens, but in Gay, it seemed like he was coming along at the end before he got injured. But, man, we got some speed, man. Those guys are killing us out there. I mean, I think we're okay. I mean, I think corner's going to work itself out. I mean, I don't really think, uh, you know, breathing more, you know, you see all these people, but they're not going to get any big bucks anywhere. I don't see them all leaving. But, you know, hey, Sherman wants to come. He'd be Ben Ward. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing is we're, we should get that uh, Mahomes discount. You know, the all these all these veterans that have already got paid, they got their money, but they haven't got that ring. And they want to come and get a ring. I mean, if Brady did it all those years, and we saw even, you know, before free agency, you saw it with, like, Terry Bradshaw, a lot of the people could have left, but they stayed. Not They couldn't leave and go to another team because free agency didn't exist. But they stayed and not retired because they wanted to get more rings. And then in the 70s and saw back. All the dynasty, air quotes, you know, they always got those uh, people that have, that have got their money, but then they still want to get a ring. But they were still okay. They were, I mean, Sherman's going to be better than Ward. I mean, I don't know. I was really happy with Ward there at the end of his second year. But, you know, he didn't really look very good, you know, especially down the stretch. He looked lost or something. I didn't know. Of course, I can't play corner, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that makes four of us. So, uh... I, I think uh, that, that, that horse has left the barn. Yeah. I ain't playing corner anytime soon. I can't even play. I I probably got the weight to play offensive line, oh, but really? my 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 Achilles, every bone would snap. You know, be like Chris Jones coming at me, and be like, ah, let me out of here. Technically, uh, <laughs> technically, uh, six one uh, six one two sixty is like the average height and weight for an NFL player. And I like to tell people, hey, I, I'm technically the same height and weight of an, of an NFL player. It's just not allocated properly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> my stats say I'm a linebacker, but I'm not a linebacker so <laughs> so, so chris I, i'm gonna throw this one at you i i would almost argue that we're already getting some of those mahomes discounts what are your thoughts on that do you have any examples oh gosh um you know i think there's definitely the possibility of wide receiver uh, maybe getting some Mahomes discount i mean there, there's a lot of free agents out there right now i mean already you got sammy Watkins, um possibly you know and I don't think the Chiefs should sign him for much more than maybe a few million dollars. I mean, it's definitely not a, a big investment you can put in him, but it'll be cur- I'll be curious to see how uh, some of these other uh, free agent wide receivers might consider taking less to play with Kansas City. I, I know that um, you know, a few names, I think Corey Davis is one that popped out to me, although I think he might be uh, too expensive. Um, you know, and all of a sudden the other names are escaping me right now, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that that will help them because I mean, the salary cap is, you know, his contract's going to start filling the salary cap. Um, what I think $16 million more than it did last year. They're already over the salary cap right now. So they're going to have to trim some uh, contracts. So, uh, you know, hopefully that Mahomes effect is going to help them get some good value. Yeah, so kind of what I was getting at, I, I think the Watkins and Demarcus Robinson did it last year. I, I, yeah. We don't get Levy on Bell without some level of, you know, I know I'm at a huge discount and I'm cheap. I, I don't know if we're going to bring him back, but Corey Davis is a name that intrigues me because uh, all the talk on the street is that with the salary cap being low, there's a possibility mm-hmm. that you could see all these one-year contracts. So I could potentially see a world. I don't think this is likely for the record. But I could potentially see a world where somebody like Corey Davis goes, maybe this isn't the year to get the uh, multi-year contract, and I'm going to take 
one year and uh why wouldn't you look at like a tampa or a kansas city or a buffalo or or something to that effect and to get uh, noticed you... exactly exactly and yep. he's already noticed you know so uh uh, I think he went to Western Michigan. Um, so, you know, maybe he decides to, to figure out the hometown, you know, lions or something to that effect. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I mean, play with Jared Goff. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Why not? I think, I think JJ Watt's going to be an intriguing one and we'll see yeah. where he's at. I, I, I think it's crazy to see that uh, Tennessee and Cleveland seem to be the first two places that he's looking at, but hmm. you know, what, what are we going to do? So, uh, Brian, I guess if there's a uh, free agent that you know of that you would like to have, who would it be? Well, you said his name just at the very end there. I was going to hold up my phone and go, there's this dude named J.J. Watt. Uh, is that my, am I saying that right? Watt? Watt? I, I, I hear he's pretty good at football. <laughs> yeah, I hear, he, uh, I hear he plays the football pretty good. So, uh, hey, pick up that guy. <laughs> well, you know, when you're... Well, uh, you so- know, I mean, he's obviously got his money. And he yep. still gets commercials and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, but I don't know. Everybody says he's going to go play with his brother. But I don't think his brother's team is going to be that good. So, I don't know about that ring thing. But, yeah, yeah, I, mm-hmm. hey, we yeah don't really, that's not really a position of need, really. Like, they're the ones we've talked about. But, you know, if Watt wants to come here on a good contract, well, yeah. we'd be stupid to say, hey, uh, no, <laughs> thanks. Uh, go play with your brother. That'd be really stupid. No, you know, I think, but, I, I think we have enough foundational stupid. work here going on. Yeah, um, yeah we, 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 get to the, we get to the quarterback way too well, and uh, there's just, you know, way too many good charities in Kansas City. Uh, you know, we don't have room yeah. for that. Uh, so let's, uh, let, let's just kind of look forward to the 2021 season. I think we can all a- agree that we assume that Brett Veach is just going to figure out the, the cap situation, and we're going to mm-hmm. go forward with all the players that we want to keep just – because I, I've never seen him do anything to think otherwise. Uh, we'll start with you, Doug. Well, what, 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 did we you... Have, what did we do? Like 70 bucks last off season? Wasn't it $70 that we had in cap room? I, I believe it was $70. I, I think yeah. it was. It was like yep. something like 70 $70. bucks. <laughs> Maybe 700 I don't know. It was some yeah. ridiculously low amount. Yep. And, and then we gave Mahomes a bit, half a billion dollars. We gave Kelsey. We gave – I mean, we gave out Jones. Jones. And so, you know, yeah. don't give me that crap about a cap thing. You know? no, it's yeah, not. you don't have unlimited, but, the, you the know, you can make some deals. Four hot dogs at the, the football game. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's fascinating when you get to the point where you're talking about 200 plus million dollars worth of just expansive dollar amount and you start talking about things that are you know less than a bar bill at the <laughs> stadium club <laughs> so uh so assuming that that works out and everything uh, what do you see happening doug for the 2021 season what do you think that's going to look like for the chiefs oh i said i think we'll do the same well i think we'll pretty much have the same season we, we should be favored in every game we play unless if Mahomes goes down and all bets are off but, you know, like you said, Kelsey, all our main players are still in their prime. They're not old yet. Now, next year, what's a – Kelsey would be like 33 or 34 towards the end. So, he may be his verge. I don't know. I don't know the exact age. But next year, he's not over the hill yet. And uh, Honey Badger, he's not. He's going to be like 30, 31. But he's not over the hill next year. Something like that. No, I think Honey Badger's younger than what we think about. Yeah, he's younger than I think 30. he's like 28, yeah. 29, something like yeah, that. He came yeah. in the league really so, I mean, young. Yeah. Yeah, he's and he'll, I mean, so. I, I, I'm looking it up. He's 28. Yeah. Yeah, so see, we we don't have any aging issues here, even though it seems like it's uh, because we, we suffered for so long, and now we've been good for three years. To me, it seems like, oh, man, we've been good for like 10 years now because it was such a bad run there. Or that we had, and it really was like we had some good years, but man, that we had those devastating losses in the playoffs. So I think that heightened our sense of man. You know, they got to do the same because Chiefs, like stuff goes wrong, like you know, Mariota bats a pass back to him, or you know, the fumble back to Luck. You know, <laughs> just <laughs> what the hell? How did that? You know, that stuff just happened to us. You know, and then we make coaching blunders and player but that stuff like that just random stuff it yeah. seemed like that would happen to us and uh you know that's you know i 
it, it made it seem longer to get out of the wilderness and back to uh, us cheering and having fun. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's a lot of it's just not, it's not waiting. It's just, man, there's so much fun to watch. I mean, you just don't know what Mahomes is going to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was mm-hmm. crazy. You expected the worst, and then a dude with a 15 jersey came back and uh, came along and won a playoff game. We were down by 24, then turned around and beat Tennessee, and then was down by 10 and won a Super Bowl. It's crazy. I mean, it, it makes you believe that anything's possible. Mm-hmm. And you know, I would say that uh, most Chiefs fans during the Super Bowl probably didn't really start penciling in a loss until third, fourth quarter. You know, I know I didn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, no was, way. Uh, Why would you? Touchdown, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when he went thing, perpendicular. Yeah. When he went perpendicular, bounced off the face mask. There. Yeah. That would have got us within a couple of, uh, I don't know. But, you know, yeah. nobody will be. So, but, I mean, if you're running around 500 yards, somebody you need for Mahomes, you can't make that up. The, the greatest thing complete pass too much. in history. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so Chris, the best, best pass, you know, we should uh, like uh, cut Williams because I'm joking. I mean, Williams is good, but, you know, people make mistakes. He'll bounce one off his face mask, too. Kelsey dropped one. I don't know what it was. I don't know if Reed, I don't, we don't know what happened to the locker room. Well, it was Reed and yeah. some, was that an issue? Was I mean, you can pick up the vibes. I mean, how could Reed not be affected by that? I mean, yeah, it's your exactly. son. You don't know what happened. You know, and players pick up on that vibe, and it's just nothing to overcome. But you know, I don't know. There, there wasn't just one thing why we lost that. I mean, mm-hmm. that was it, it was a it wasn't a good day to say the least. Yeah, for me, it's like normally we overcome those mistakes early on, and that was the first game I saw where we we just didn't have an answer. Like the 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 room for margin was so so much slimmer, and yeah, a lot of it had to do with the box. Um, that was the first time I felt that way in the in the Patrick Mahomes era. Mm-hmm. Okay, so before we uh, bounce on to the next question, uh, I, I want to get from everybody regular season record projection, and uh, we're going to assume the 16 game season. I don't think they're going to have the 17th, but we'll go regular season uh, record projection, uh, final standing for the AFC West, and. Um, what you think they're going to do for the season as a whole. So Brian, what do you think for a 16 game record, where are they going to fit in the finish in the AFC West and what are they going to do for the last game that they play? Well, uh, so AFC West, uh, so AFC, let me think here. Um, it's like, that's it's eight games, right? So I'm thinking <clears throat> probably. Well, it's, it, it's six, six, it's six in the six in the, the division. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go five and one that 13, <clears throat> three overall. That's just, Okay. Random numbers picking out of the sky. I'm picking out of the heavens up here. <laughs> and there we go. All right. And then, so uh, what's the last game of the season? How's it go? Well, it's a Super Bowl. And we are going to defeat uh, who are we going to beat? We're going to beat, uh, oh, the Green Bay Packers. All right. There you go. Chris, what do you think? Oh, my default is 12 and four. So I'm going to go with that right now. Uh, Sure, five and one division. Maybe they split with the Chargers this year. I mean, I, I see them getting better um, behind Justin Herbert. Um, as far as their last game of the season, uh, yeah, let's put it. I, I'd say I say they're still the AFC favorite. I mean, unless Josh Allen and the Bills take another step up, I, I don't see that next team. In the AFC, um, sorry Colts, but you're not there with Carson Wentz. Um, but I, I still see them coming as being the favorite, so I'm going to put them in the Super Bowl. As far as who they play, I hope they play the Bucks. I want to see those guys again, and I hope we get revenge on them. All right, Doug, what do you think? Hey, I'm going to go. I'm going to go 13-3. I think they'll lose one. I mean, just by happenstance in the division. They'll have a bad game on the road or some will go run or a ball will bounce. And, but they're going to be clearly the better team, even though I agree, I think, uh, with, with Chris here. I think Herbert is the real deal. And we're going to, he's, we're going to be bothered by him going forward. But not yet, because he doesn't really have much around him. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with, you know, the other teams. They, like, I, I just don't see how, how is Buffalo going to get a running game? Maybe they get a good running back. 
but they they've got holes, they got problems. I I don't see them. I I just don't see anybody. I mean, even though we got all the young best quarterbacks in the whole league, I mean, the, what does does the NFC even have one good young quarterback? I can't young think Kyler off Murray. My head. Yeah, Kyler. Yeah, young Murray. Kyler. Murray. Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess here, here, here's the next question: Do you consider Matthew Stafford old? Well, I mean, he's he's always been really good, man. He's got a damn good arm. He, but, he's your know, answer don't, if you don't consider him old. Yeah, he, I guess you know, but with, I mean, for considering that all the good young quarterbacks in the AFC, they're all. I the just AFC. don't think anybody. You know, I mean, I just don't think anybody can hang with us unless we have a bad day. I mean, any given Sunday yeah. in the NFL, but yeah, I, I see us going back, and uh, that defense is pretty good with. Uh, with, that we saw against uh, against uh, against us this year, but the year before, San Francisco had a pretty damn good defense too, mm-hmm. and then they they totally crashed. So I mean, year to year, uh, we could lose some of them. We can't lose Mahomes. We can't lose Mahomes. But what if we lose Kelsey for half a season or Hill or something? We could probably survive that. I don't think you could lose like some of your stuff, like Brady. Things like that, quarterback especially. Um, I think we we just got too much talent and too much going on. But I I mean, we can oh we proved that the very last game of the year. We can lose. We can lose big. We can look stupidly bad. But again, I don't think we were stupidly bad. I mean, thinking Bills, the face mask hitting the ball hitting the face mask. We just didn't see that this year. So we'll just. I'm just going to write that up. It's like just having that bad game and stuff going bad because I, you know, he's running around for his life and then timing was off, but you know, they just had a good game plan and we didn't adjust. So we can't really, hopefully, uh, remember, yeah, remember we used to all complain about Andy Reid and his, and his conservative <laughs> play calling. Remember that? And now he's, he's got his backup quarterback throwing forth the one to win the game. So, you know, maybe there's – maybe he can um, – <laughs> next time that happens when Mahomes is running for his life, maybe he'll make some adjustments and uh, get some help or at least try to get some more blocking. Mm-hmm. All right, so tonight I'm drinking a uh, Bitburger Sierra Nevada combined uh, triple hot lager. We're uh, not sponsored by them, but we're open if they want to. And I'm going to say right now <clears throat> that uh, I'm going to throw down – a cocky take because I know that we make cocky takes on here. And so here's my cocky take for next year. As of right now, I think that we're going to see some serious mental fortitude. Uh, one of my favorite books I've ever read is uh, <laughs> Bill Simmons, the former ESPN writer guy who runs the ringer. Now uh, he had this uh, chapter in his book of basketball that he called the March of Kaiser Soze. And the whole thing it's, it's based on, the usual suspects and anybody that hasn't seen that movie, I don't even care if you're mad about this, but there's a, there's a scene where Kaiser Soze becomes the gangster of the world. And he goes on this uh, rant and he just burns down every village that's in his way. And so Bill Simmons context on that was you have a team that didn't quite get to where they wanted to in the next season. They just take out every single ounce of aggression that they had on anybody that's in their way. So I'm going to go with the regular season 15 and one record and the one loss that I'm going to put down is the Baltimore Ravens on the road. And I think that this is going to be their token. They finally get Lamar Jackson, his win against Mahomes, but it doesn't mean anything because it's in the regular season and the Chiefs go 15 and one. And then they steamroll through the playoffs. And I don't care who they're playing in the Super Bowl. Uh, I kind of am with Chris and I, I hope it's the Bucks again. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not doubting Tom Brady. I'm betting on Patrick Mahomes. And uh, I, I 100% believe that Tom Brady can score 24 to 31 points again. But I also believe that Andrew Reed and Mahomes can score more points than they did this last year. So that's my take right there. And I can't wait to see that uh, clip somewhere. So anyway. <laughs> Your clip channel, buy coffee from my Amazon channel right now. All 100,000 of you watching this right now. Exactly. Like a exactly. piece of the puppy. Exactly. For- <laughs> exactly. And the best way to do that is if you go on YouTube, you can download the video and you can get some free software like Windows Movie Maker and then uh, put the uh, split thing to clip, delete everything in front of it. 
clip again at the other end, delete everything behind it, and then you can save it as an MP4 and put it in whatever you want. We're cool with that. So uh, next question I want to ask Doug is, uh, tell me about Arrowhead South. You are the founder of Arrowhead South. What is that all about? And what was the biggest thing that you've you've done in the past uh, 365 days with Arrowhead South? Uh what did I think about in the last 365 days about uh, what, what, what's Arrowhead the biggest South? thing that what? Arrowhead South did in the last 365 days? So, so basically, uh, it's a long we, way of saying, well, tell me about over, your Super Bowl party. <laughs> yeah, we took over a minor league soccer stadium. You know, that's pretty wild for a Chiefs fan group. I mean, we had actual police and security and and all that, man. And, and I haven't heard the numbers yet, but I'm pretty sure we made profit off that. I mean, uh, it was quite a pretty penny to rent that thing, too. But it was socially distanced. We're the only party in Tampa where, where they actually social distanced and wore masks and, and did everything by the city codes and all that stuff. So we're pretty happy about that. I mean, I, I think I, I see a picture. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I started out with, like, I moved to Amazon from Kansas City, season ticket holder forever. And... Um, uh, I moved down here and I was used to watching the game with fellow G fans and I figured there had to be, I knew two other people down here and I said, there has to be more than us three. There has to be. And so how are we going to find them? And that was the guy. I just went to watch the game with more Chiefs fans than myself and these other two guys. And that was the whole thing. I said, let's find them and let's, let's meet up and let's watch the game together somewhere. And it was kind of slow because at the time we really sucked. I mean, you know, part of the time was the um, 2 and 12. I mean, we just really, and so really wasn't hyped up. And plus, we're going, we're all, Tampa, the Tampa Bay area is a really big metro area. So you've got people driving 30, 40 minutes just to go to a central part because we're all scattered out, you know. And there was only like six, eight of us. And then the, the TV that they would give us would be like across the bar with no sound. And so we had to deal with that for like six to eight years. Yeah. So you figure, and, and we sucked, and we get our asses kicked, and we're watching across the bar with no sound. It's a wonder we ever survived that. But we finally did. Uh, I, I, I finally, uh, I, I was on the meetup, though, before we went to Facebook. I was on meetup. And um, then I, I was able to... Uh, use some SEOs and just link a bunch of stuff on Facebook. And people started finding us. And then we did like 20, 30, something like that. We were going to people's homes and then sometimes bars. Then we move around for places. And, uh, and then finally um, the SEO started taking over and people started finding us. And uh, then we, we took off. And then uh, my place was just packed solid. I couldn't fit any more in there. And, uh, so we split that off into four people the first year that we started our expansion. Four, I'm sorry, four chapters in the greater in the greater Tampa Bay area. So we went to Pasco, Sarasota, Brandon. So we split off into four different sections of the metro, and those filled up. Those were those. They all filled up too. Uh, so we said, okay, who else wants in? Then the people started saying, hey, we want Miami, we want Jacksonville, we want Orlando, you know, and now we want one here, that kind of thing. And so we expanded some more, and people just liked the idea. The whole idea is, from the start, was there was no money involved. We didn't want any money. I mean, I don't know how you would make money with this thing anyway. I don't see how there's any money to be made. Well, just having a chapter and fandom, uh, maybe get a little sponsor, get a little get back or something, but nobody's going to make serious money. And there's so much work, especially to take this thing national, which is what we're trying to do now. Uh, you can't, uh, and it's all volunteer. There's no money involved. We don't sell people's advertising. We don't charge to go to our events. We don't charge to be a member of our site. Uh, you know, so uh, people kind of like that idea. They like the the formula, I guess. We kind of stumbled upon where, where it's, it's all volunteers. No money charged. I mean, like some of the chapters, they'll do 50-50s. They'll do raffles, but there's no money being made. They're, they're raising money for charity. They're using it to fund their prizes they give away, you know, that kind of thing. 
Uh, we're talking, we're and, talking just pure so, fan passion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that's the whole thing is that you, you get the true Chiefs fans, and I don't mean that in, like, real Chiefs fan kind of thing, but, I mean, the ones that are going to show up every week, they'll, they'll come to that because it's all volunteer. They know everybody's there just for the fandom. Nobody's there for an ulterior motive. Uh, one of the things that was I created an environment in my, the first place, which ended up going to the four, and then Jacksonville was the first uh, event we had. That was 2019, 2018. What is it? When was Jacksonville? It was last year. Yeah, first yeah. game of last year. Yeah, we turned Jacksonville red. If you watched that yeah. game, we did watch that, that was game. us. Well, we sold those tickets. Thank you. We did that. <laughs> we turned Jacksonville red. And we had this huge tailgate. I had somebody, because we were just going to do this, the thing like we always do. Oh, you bring some grills, we'll get over here. You bring some meat, we'll do this. And then I got contacted by the Kansas City Barbecue Society. And uh, they said, hey, you know, we'll bring our whole trucks down there, these big barbecue rigs, these professional pit masters that, you know, actually are champions that know what they're doing and doing Kansas City Barbecue. And they said, hey, we'll come down there. And I, so I called up Jacksonville, the Jaguars, and said, hey, here's what we want to do. We want to have big barbecue. We want to have a tailgate. And they, they weren't very good at the time. And so uh, I talked them into it. I know, you know, that they worked with us pretty good. They gave us the land, the parking spot, the tables for free, security. Um, they gave us trash. They gave us all that stuff for free. And uh, we divided the loot, and we had the uh, third of it went to the Patrick Mahomes Foundation, third went to uh, the Jack Wires Nick Foles Foundation, and third went to um, the Kansas City Barbecue, where they used hundred privileged kids. Raised fifteen thousand dollars that weekend. Wow. Uh, we had a Saturday night and a Sunday, and everybody had so much fun. I mean, everybody was just like, "Where has this been our whole life? We need more of this," you know. And so then that really set our our membership and people knowing about us off the charts and then not everybody wanted the chapter we're still kind of picky because we we want to we want to make sure that we have that same environment wherever you go the you know a welcoming fun environment you know and and we're in the south you know so you know it, we didn't care you know, well, I mean, anybody could show up and we didn't care about religion or any of that stuff. It didn't matter any of that, um, except for Raiders and Broncos fans. He, he wasn't welcome, but I mean, that's, we got to draw the line somewhere, you know. Hey, I mean, there's some hey. justified prejudice, and I'd say Raiders and Broncos are the, uh, the, the places yeah, where that I'm comes I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to have to draw the line somewhere, you know. I mean, Orange and blue are not to... real colors that go together. They're actually completely contrasting <laughs> if you look at a, a primary and secondary color wheel. But what we always close with is everybody gets a chance to say something about anything. So... Doug, we'll start with you as a guest. What is your parting take? You can just give 30 seconds on anything you want to talk about. 30 seconds on what I want to talk. So let's talk about NASA and the rover. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. Well, my son was going to be an astrophysicist for a while. I think I really got in science. I, you know, I watch uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson a lot. I don't know why. I'm not really um, that smart. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I just think uh, I think uh, that some the Chiefs fans just need to keep their head up. Yeah, we got beat bad. It sucked, you know. But, hey, aren't we familiar with that? Haven't we got our butts kicked many times? We are. Well, you know, <laughs> I'd rather, I, I guess if we're going to get our butts kicked, we'll, you know, get embarrassed in the wild card playoff. You know, well, at least you got some fun. Super Bowl. Plus, you know, it's more, it's a journey because we know we're not going to win 10 out of 12 Super Bowls. That ain't happening. Just the odds are just not going to happen. So just enjoy the journey. You know, we kind of took it for granted. At least I did, I think. Oh, we're just going to roll over. And, you know, we had these where they'd let them back in. We should be crushing them or something, you know. Uh, I, I think I'll make an improvement on that next year. We'll all just enjoy the ride. And, and like, Andy, what are you doing running the ball? Crush these guys. Get them out, you know. Yeah. Uh, just enjoy the ride. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, what do you got? Um, gosh, uh, well, to Devin White, um, 
I hope we see you in the Super Bowl again next year. Um, you pretty much said the obvious. Yes, we played into your hands. But, uh, you know, karma, man, karma. Uh, my name is Earl. Brian, what, what do you got? I'm going to go with, uh, I think Pat Mahomes said that uh, Patrick Mahomes, excuse me, uh, Randy, his mother, uh, Patrick yeah, don't Mahomes. get it turned over. Randy is going to be ticked. <laughs> there is. Uh, okay, so the next thing, uh, was it, or like a few, was it Monday of this week where Patrick tweeted him at the, the practice stadium or practice area, like uh, back to work and he's back to practicing, uh, just letting us know that he's not, uh, he's not screwing around. He's doing what he does, doing Patrick Mahomes things. So, I mean, I really enjoyed seeing that, like, uh, you know, we're not obviously we go to the Super Bowl instead. Uh, resting in the laurels is kind of a funny thing to say when you go back to back Super Bowls and you get to the point. I mean, I think we're talking a few weeks ago how lucky we are to even be in the position. And yeah. uh, obviously we we're confident and then we got, we got ourselves humbled and that's what happens sometimes. And uh, but, you know, back to work and everyone seems uh, whenever he said that uh, the, the vibe in the locker room, no one enjoyed that feeling and they don't want to feel that again. Like, OK, well, I think that must have landed. And. I think we got a team of winners and they're talented and we know they're talented. We know they know what they got to do and they're hungry and angry and they are coming back with a vengeance. So I'm excited for this upcoming, is it September yet? Is that, is that the question? Uh, that's, a, that's the question I'm asking. You're getting close. It's getting close, getting close. We got the draft coming up and then the rest yeah. of the off season. So my, my parting take is going to be, uh, we mentioned NASA. I'm going to talk about NASCAR. Uh, so I want to give a big shout out to Michael McDowell in the 34 car winning his first cup race after 358 cup starts and he just happened to win the uh, biggest race that the NASCAR circuit has, which is the equivalent of going 0 and 18 and winning the Super Bowl. Um, like, it's not that's not possible like leasing, in football, but uh, hold on. that's like leasing 90 helicopters with a Catalina wine mixer. Uh, it is leasing 90 helicopters. We made our, we made our not this year. We made our not, but, uh, Pow! but anyway, um, I, I stayed up really late to watch that race. I was uh, kind of aggravated until I wasn't, and that was a really good end. I'm a Chase Elliott fan. I'll just throw that out there because the 48 car retired. I was a Jimmy Johnson fan forever, uh, and uh, I'm sure that I've lost 90% of everybody who's watching this. So good night, Chiefs Kingdom, <laughs> and we'll talk to you later. <laughs> so run it back for the boys from 16.